Thanks, Ivan. For sure. And when, we, when we do Q&A, uh, we're going to get the mic to you. So raise your hand, keep it up until the mic gets to you, and then you can ask the question so we've got it on video. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I think I've met a lot of you guys, um, not all. Uh, I am Otto Zabini. I am the Director of Sales and Marketing over at, at iRacing. Uh, I do want to start off by saying thank you very, very much to Scion and Gateway Church for putting this thing on. Awesome. Uh, you guys, I mean, you may have an idea, but it takes a lot to put something like this on. You've got to have the infrastructure. It's not cheap. And uh, they, they do it first, first rate. So you guys are very lucky to, to you'll be a part of this. And so big hand for Scion and Gateway Church. <laughs> Secondly, and equally as important, you guys, so let me just say thank you to all of you. Without iRacing community and our members, there is no iRacing. So uh, that does not get lost on us, even though sometimes you guys think it might um, by the things that we do or don't do. Uh, and it's not because we don't want to um, satisfy everyone. It's just it's, it's, it's a process. It's a, it's a moving target. Uh, and we appreciate the patience. I know you guys have invested time, money uh, in, in this hobby, this sport. Uh, we hope to continue to grow iRacing and sim racing in general. Uh, and it's a work in progress. I mean, even though we've been, a lot of us have been doing this for, I don't know, 15, 20 plus years uh, with other, other titles and, and software out there prior to iRacing, uh, you know, it's, I think it's still in, in its infancy and I think it's only gonna get better. Um, so, uh, as technology grows, as, as computers get better, as they get cheaper, as hardware uh, continues to, to push that boundary and that barrier of, of, of sim versus real world, uh, I think it's only going to get better. So, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Big hand for you guys, because thank you very much for, for being here. Appreciate it. We've got a ton of stuff going on at iRacing. Um, a lot of builds with a lot of stuff in there. We've got a ton of stuff in the pipeline. Um, I'm sure you guys have a ton of questions, so rather than me taking up any more valuable time, I'll do my best to answer your questions. Um, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that we're working on that I can't talk about. Uh, there's stuff that I can talk about. There's stuff that you're going to ask me, and I'm going to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm a sales and marketing guy, uh, so I'm not one of the engineers. One of these days, we'll actually get like an engineer here so you can pick his brain. Um, but I do have the, the luxury uh, of being able to sit in on some of the you know, development meetings and ask questions and, and bug some of the, uh, the uh, uh, vehicle dynamic engineer guys uh, on, on things. And you know, normally, they'll answer at least part of my question before they kick me out. Uh, but anyway, so I'll do my best to answer the questions, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through what we're working on and, uh, and, then, and then wrap things up and eat. Sounds so. good. So we'd like you to raise your hand. Leo, everybody meet Leo. Uh, Leo will bring you the microphones, and then you can ask your question. And the main reason for this is because we're capturing all this, and then we'll be publishing these on Inside Sim Racing, so then we can hear your guys' questions. So raise your hand, we'll get you the mic, you can ask questions. And there's a lot going on, so if you see me going like this, it's because I don't want to forget anything. I've got my little cheat sheet, because there's just a, a ton of stuff going on, so anyway. Okay, is the uh, Renault 3.5 gonna come out, or is it dead? It's gonna come out. Huh? It's, it's, it's in queue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and so, so when, we, when we got that licensing deal, it included both the 2.0 and the 3.5. The uh, 2.0 was always the priority uh, to get that out first. 
It was also easier to get uh, some of the information, uh, the you know, data, the cat. Follow the, up. The, the, Do you have any idea when? No. I mean, soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag soon. I, it's just so you know, it it is right now planned to to be like I said. We've we have the license, so it's just a matter of now gathering information. And uh, I mean, for those of you that have tried the Renault 2.0, I think you agree it's a pretty awesome car. So uh, we're excited about that, and the member base is too. So that's why it, it'd be foolish of us to ignore it. Uh, we want a grid button for hosted sessions. So you do like a two-hour hosted session, and an admin can do exclamation point grid, and all of a sudden you kick everybody out, and they would give them a minute to grid. That way you can practice your start, standing, rolling, whatever. As soon as it goes green, it's not like a different session. It's still practice. As soon as it goes green, admin has a chance to do grid again. Yeah. Because so the problem is turn one, lap one, heroes. You got to practice your starts, right? So how are you going to do it? Pit parties don't work. They're chaos. You know, you can't keep hosting little short races, you know? So we want a grid button. What do you think about that? It's, we've actually talked about it. Yeah. So it's, it's not actually a, a, a new a new topic uh, for us. We're always looking at ways of improving admin functionality. And so uh, it's, it'd be very easy for us to say, yeah, we'll, we'll just add this. Um, but it's, you know, it's, you add one thing and it disturbs other things that, so um, we, uh, obviously hosted session for us is a big thing as leagues continue to, you know, grow, as more people start leagues, uh, you know, people, really want that kind of um, functionality without us being open source and saying, hey, you know, do whatever you guys want, because um, that's not what we do. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's a valid thing, and, and, and something that, that's already been kind of bought up. Um, and I think moving forward, you're, you're going to see more admin um, functionality and ease of use, because I, uh, I, like I said, there's, there's that and about 50 other things that guys, you know, want in that. But that's a good one. My question is related to painting cars. I had asked somebody in iRacing a while back ago about getting high res, not the, the lines, the geometry, flat, that I can use in Illustrator. Because I like to start off in Adobe Illustrator. Mm -hmm. Because creating lines and stripes is so much easier there and then copying that over into Photoshop. I've been a graphic designer for a really long time, but to see all those lines and get them lined up is so much easier in Illustrator if the resolution was better on the geometry map. Right. Yeah, the mesh. Yeah. Is there any... I asked for that, and they were like, we're not going to give you that because you can use it to... Well, it, you can't You. I mean... Not in 2D. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, as I drop my mic. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Illustrator. Okay. Um, and so I don't want to give you some answer that I can't really, you know, give you a, a you know, good answer for. Uh, we are working on a lot of graphical uh, updates, um, whether that includes the, the skins. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, as we continue our implementation with DX11, there's going to be a lot of things that we'll be able to do more efficiently in Sim. And so, uh, uh, you know, th that won't necessarily affect frame rate. Um, and, and so, yeah, you add, you add these files and, and textures. And, and if I'm talking something that makes n no sense, well, it's not related, forgive right? me, because, okay. because, like I said, I don't understand necessarily the, well, the background of that. Well, there's somebody at our raising that you can direct me to that I can ask that proper question. Well, after this, if you want to, you know, you write it down, I'll be happy to, you know, send it to our, our VP of art. And I'll get an answer for you. And the answer will be no. No, I, that, that's not, that's not, that's not the answer. He'll understand. Yeah, exactly. He'll get it. Yeah. So it's, excuse my ignorance on, on that topic. Yeah, a couple of questions. First, in your particular area, we all have our rigs sitting in front of friends that come over. And every time you sign on and let somebody try it, it's a scary experience because they get your login. The next time you log in, you got a thousand PMs and a, and a safety rating of D0.2 again. Um, so it, it, it might be helpful for us to promote 
the SIM for you, if there was a way of logging in that totally locked off any online, so you could log in, maybe a different login thing where all it would let you do is test cars, it would not let you access any official sessions whatsoever. And you can and that, do testing now. Well, but if you I, but I you got to log so, in, and they're standing there while you log in with your real login. Yeah, right? So tell them to turn around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it, the, the whole I, mean, I I I understand exactly what you're saying, and I respect what you're saying. Uh, it's yeah, it, everything is built on everyone having their own account and not sharing their account, and that's kind of been our our core thing. And I get it from a promotion side of things. Hey, try my sim. I think you can still accomplish that in you know hosted sessions and 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 uh, you know offline testing and let people you know fool around uh, in your living room without without compromising your logon and stuff. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean it's great. Yeah, exactly, ghost stuff. Uh, it's there's only so many man hours in the day and the week and the month, and there's so many priorities of things that we need to get in the sim. Um, that, uh, you know, on an, from an engineering standpoint, I know that they're not going to spend time on doing some sort of thing special so people can, uh, from me, from a, a marketing point of view, yeah, obviously I want as many people to experience iRacing, uh, especially on good equipment, because it makes a huge difference than if you're just, uh, you know, hey, here's my, here's my mouse, you know, try iRacing. <laughs> you know, it's going to be a miserable experience. Um, or if you hop on, you know, Scion's rig, the experience is going to be completely different. You yeah, know? Next, so. next question. When, when are you going to have full functionality for the latest version of the SDK for the Rift? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so VR is a, a huge priority for us. We know that uh, sim racing and uh, gaming in general is going to, you know, virtual reality. As most of you guys know, uh, we were early adapters to the, the first couple of beta versions of the Oculus. Um, and they actually used iRacing in their, in their early launch demos. Uh, then they changed everything. <laughs> uh, so we actually just received, after, after talking to them for like forever, uh, some new headsets and, and the new API and, and along with uh, the HTC stuff. I mean, there's, there's, there's multiple guys that are coming out with stuff now. Um, so we're working on it. It's a priority for us. Uh, while a lot of guys in this room may not use it, just because, I mean, I, I, you know, it's, it's new. So it'll probably slow you down before it speeds you up. But, uh, it, I mean, that's where everything's going, to, you know, blur that line of, of, of sim slash real world. Uh, so VR is absolutely a priority for us. We're working on it right now. And I think it'll be in, in short order that we will have that. So I don't, I don't want to, I'm back here. Um, I don't want to call you loose lips, but you did say that you scribbled some stuff on your piece of paper. So what's the most exciting piece of news on that piece of paper that we'd like to know about? Dirt. Well, that's, <laughs> you guys know about Sony, but I mean, dirt is huge for us. Okay, so we've been working on, on, on dynamic track for a while now. We knew that iRacing was lacking that um, and that that would really take things to the next level. What we didn't realize is that it laid a great foundation for dirt racing. And so uh, when we started investigating a little further in, we're like, wow, it, while it's still a ton of work, don't get me wrong, that, that whole movement of the groove and in and, 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 and dirt, you know, moving of that, you know, cushion, uh, it, the foundation is there. So it's, it, it was pretty exciting and the stars kind of aligned and I mentioned to, you know, uh, Darren not that long ago uh, that uh, what, we, what we got was, I mean, I don't say lucky, but lucky um, that we have a pretty good relationship with Peak. Peak sponsors our a world championship on the oval side. Peak has a very good relationship with Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer is huge into dirt racing. He owns Clint Boyer Racing, which is a dirt late model team. So we had the opportunity to go down to their shop, scan their cars, talk shop, get a bunch of information um, from their team. And then through Clint Boyer Racing, obviously Clint's going to be driving for Tony next year. Tony owns Eldora. 
Uh, and through that, we kind of got the Eldora license. So our guys are actually at Eldora this week, weather permitting, um, to scan that track. Also, uh, Greg Hale, our, our VP of production, as well as Dan Garrison, the guy that's our, our main engineer working on dynamic track, uh, he's also there. Uh, so for us, dirt's going to be huge, and it's amazing how many people are interested in it. It's going to open the sim to a whole group of people that never even considered it. Um, and, and so for us, that's, I mean, that's huge. You know, uh, I, I mean, Kyle Larson called us out of the blue. I mean, I'm, I'm, he's been a, a member for a while. I don't know how active he is, but uh, he goes, guys, I'm psyched, and let me know what you guys need, because I want in on this project. Um, and then, you know, Swindell and a, you know, a bunch of other guys are like, yeah, this is going to be amazing. So, I mean, dirt for us right now is, is huge. Steve actually uh, uh, gave us a, a, a date of, of uh, end of year to get something out. It's very aggressive. <laughs> so uh, they're working hard on it, and, and hopefully we'll have, we'll have dirt here um, by the end of year. And even if you're, if you're not dirt guys, I, I think you're going to be blown away because I've just heard Dan talking, and it's like uh, it, it is a lot about moisture content and how that clay and dirt absorbs the water and how it moves. It, it, it's going to be pretty awesome. It's, it's going to be a game changer. So with the dirt too, so we're, we're, we're going to start obviously with Clint's late model. Um, but our goal is to have a bunch of tracks, a bunch of cars and, and have a ladder similar to what we do in, on the oval side and on the road side. Um, that's probably a little ways down the road. Um, we've alluded to the fact that we may just fill in a couple of existing tracks just so we can get some kind of, you know, like they did Bristol. Once, and, yeah, <laughs> and they said we'll never do that again because it's way too expensive and way dirty. But yeah, but yeah, but ex exactly. But it, in iRacing, racing, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's it's some art and dev time, which is super cheap. I, uh, <laughs> I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, since we're talking about dirt, is the I rating safety rating for oval going to be the same? Are you coming initially out with a new probably, class? In, initially, event. probably yes. I mean, because I mean, you can argue with that now, saying that you know street stocks beat and bang all day long, and, yeah. but but that you know, and, and it's kind of it's kind of the same thing, you know, short track late model racing. I mean, those guys. I mean, it's a full contact sport. Yeah, if you're not using a you hammer know? in your car, you weren't in the right? race. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. If your right side's not all you know beat up, then you're slow, you know. But yeah, so. Initially, probably not. We'll see how, what kind of a what kind of. I mean, we don't want to redesign the sim as far as our, our safety and I rating. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of play that one by by year because obviously you, you you drive those cars like like this. I mean, it's inevitable you're gonna be hitting stuff. Um, but uh, for right now, it's it's probably gonna stay the same and it'll be kind of evaluated as we go. All right. My second question is. Um, Ever since you guys moved to qualifying before sessions on everything, it's made it really, really hard for the feeder series to go from, let's say, your rookie street stock race to whatever's at the half hour mark, then back into, you know, the Mazda Cup at yep. the start. And a lot of people, you know, they, especially in the rookie series, they want to just go, 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 and they don't want to sit and wait. Well, you know, one of, the, one of my main complaints is, is you have like that two minute practice time, two minute grid time, five minute qualifying time, or seven minutes depending on the track. You know, can we shorten that up? Would that ever get shortened up? Because that is, I mean, I, I understand why the qualifying beforehand is there, but you know, it, just to keep the the flow of from race to race, what could we do, or you guys do, to have to improve that, is there it's any a good question. on that? I mean, so there's there's pros and cons to doing it both ways. I mean, some guys want more time there, you know, and other guys want less time there. And uh, it's a, especially on the lower levels. I agree with you. Um, it's it's kind of a of a now, hurry up and wait, and you can't really do anything. Yeah, I mean, because uh, I mean, I, if you I get, get into it. the higher levels, you know, 
there every other hour mm -hmm. or, or whatnot. So that's not that big a deal. But yeah. when you're down in in the you know going from a Mazda Cup to yeah. a street stock, trying to do a Legends race, and even the Cadillac series, which is at a you know the yep. half hour mark, you just can't go from one to one. And a lot of, a lot of they get frustrated because they, yeah. Then then you then you gotta sit for a half hour before you can do anything because you missed it by one minute. Well, who? But a rookie doesn't practice. You know, someone, someone new coming in is just wanting to race. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, and that it's legit. even, and I found it very frustrating when I'm like, just, just going from one race and I miss it by one minute because I couldn't get out of that other race fast enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have an answer for that. You know, you know quite frankly, uh, I know that it was done that for a reason. And, uh, you know, uh, if it's not working or if, if we see that there's major issue with, you know, fall off with, you know, rookies because they're getting frustrated, believe me, that's going to get my attention if, if I don't see that member retention there because they're, they're, they're getting angry. <laughs> that's, that's bad for business. Um, so uh, I guess we're just, just going to have to monitor it and, and, and see. But I, I understand what you're saying, and I, and I want to say I agree with it without saying I agree with it. If that's possible. Uh, hi, Otto. I had a question that's a little bit different than dirt. Uh, okay. I think uh, Long Beach is the only temporary circuit in iRacing today as a test track. Is there or a technical test or whatever? Yeah, it's tech called. track. Is there any chance you guys could do some more temporary circuits or even finish Long Beach? Yeah, we actually do want to finish Long Beach. That's that's been that's been in. Uh, I hate to say it's been in queue because it, it, it sounds old for me to say that, but it has. Uh, but now Long Beach has changed as well. Um, I think there, there's some things that are different from when we last scanned it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, it's, just, it's a massive art project, and we keep taking on these massive art projects. So just going back to, to, to uh, um, some of the tracks, I mean, Nürburgring for us we, was huge, okay? And that's in the middle of the woods. Like, it, there's, there's a bunch of trees, okay? So, yeah, it's like, whatever, 15 miles, 16 miles. I mean, but it's, you know, there's, you go through Adenau and you go through a couple other things, but basically it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. So we're actually in the process, and this is no secret, that we're in the process of, of, of building Le Mans, okay? And even though it's a shorter circuit, it's literally like four or five times the art project that... Norsch life is. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're working really hard on getting out Le Mans for the end of, end of the year. You know, uh, hopefully, you know, sometime early Q4, but it, it may be late Q4. It could even slip. I mean, but uh, we didn't realize when we first started, that, you know, how many trackside objects there actually are at Le Mans. You know, because we were like, let's get it up for the race. And like, you know, production, the art guys were looking at us like, have you guys lost your minds? It's never happening. Um, so, yeah, do we want to finish Long Beach? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think guys have been kind of playing with it a little bit on the side, but it's, talk about a massive, I mean, that, that's, it's in the middle of a city. I mean, it's, it's, so it's, it's crazy. So do we plan, we don't plan on doing tech tracks. That's not what we do. Uh, I think sometimes, and especially early on, we didn't realize that they were as big of projects as we thought they were going to be. Um, so hopefully we can actually finish Long Beach one day, but I'm not going to promise that to you, like, in short term. <laughs> uh, right now, we're, it's, it's all hands on deck for Lamar, and hopefully we can get that out for, for sometime in Q4. I'd love to have it out just prior to Christmas, maybe two weeks. <laughs> anyway... Thanks for the question. Um, <clears throat> I had a suggestion to add on to his question about Please. the... Please. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'd been thinking about this for a while, and I used to race a lot of series consecutively before I moved up, and I was thinking it'd be really nice if you could just queue up your registrations, and then you wouldn't be bit so hard by the time crunch, because you'll probably have enough time to get into your... So registering session. for multiple sessions simultaneous is what you're saying, and then just jumping from, from one to another? Yeah, and that 30-minute registration window prior to the session, you know, like on the bigger races, it would be nice to register like two hours before, so I can go dive into a practice and sit there and wait for the race to start, instead of having to like bail out of my practice, go find the race, rejoin another practice, work on different weather, 
you know, so that's kind of my suggestion. It'd be always been nice if we could say like, well, I'm doing this race on Wednesday, so I'm already signed up. We've actually talked about, I mean, it's, it's not a new you know, concept to us. It's a database thing. And it kind of, it, it, I don't know the technical part of why, but it's, it's somehow registering for more, how the, how the site was designed, how the sim was designed. It, 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 it messes with some foundational stuff uh, by registering for more than one. And to fix that breaks 10,000 other things. And, and again, that, that, that's kind of like a, so you've, you've heard a thousand times, uh, you know, why don't you just add this? Why don't you add this? If it was that easy, we'd be adding stuff every single day. But you change some of the f fundamental foundational things, and it affects a thousand different things in the upper Regression. upper levels. And that's kind of you know just kind of hitting on on the our you know our web stuff that we've been kind of working through. At the end of the day, I mean, that was built on what twelve year old technology at this point. So stuff has come a long way, and we. We knew that, and we've kind of started planning for that six, five, six years ago. But I mean, picture like a skyscraper, right? Where you've, you've worked stuff, and now everything's built on top. Now you, you kind of want to change the foundation. Well, how do you prop everything else up? Delete all the code and start With, over. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've been developing for another four, five, six years, you know? I mean, and so, but we're actually changing the way that the sim is running. Right now, uh, our, I mean, we've we're, been working on, on a new UI for the last couple of years. That was what I was going to ask next, is when is that supposed to land? Yeah, I mean, it's a million dollar question. I wish it was, you know, a year ago, we, like we thought it would it'd be. It's, it's a huge project because we're basically re-architecting, -architect, is that a word? Engineering uh, how we do it. So right now, the website is the gateway into the sim where it probably won't be like that. It'll be more like an app type thing. Um, so, which should make it, make everything much more efficient. And so we'll be able to do the things, like you said, perhaps with the multiple registering. Of, it'll just make everything that much more efficient. Because right now, we keep piling stuff onto this 12-year-old technology. And so it's just getting, it's getting beat. You know, and so we have a team that's 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 all they've been doing is this whole you know redesign. But there's growing pains in that, and it's very hard to load test some of this stuff properly. So until you, they're like, well, you know, why don't you, you know, test this stuff in alpha? Well, because we're not going to invite fifty thousand people into alpha to like start doing stuff. You know, you know what I mean? So it's it's not unique to iRacing. It's anyone that that. that that kind of you know deals with 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 that kind of scalable you know scalable growth, um, but we are addressing it. And at the end of the day, uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna be a game changer for for the user, the end user, because it's gonna be a lot more the the whole process of joining a race and and going through all the various things that we do are gonna be a whole lot more seamless. They're gonna be much quicker, more efficient, less reliable, uh, less reliant on on our 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 doorway right now which is our 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 member homepage you know so it's it's pretty cool and i I've, I've seen some of the stuff and it's going to look really sharp too it's going to be more user friendly like right now a user comes to our our member homepage and like you know they get inundated with 4000 different things like dude all i want to do is race <laughs> right uh, and we know that's a problem you know the last thing that we want to do, the last thing I want to do as a, as a marketing person is intimidate the brand new user because we're going to lose that person before we ever even get them. So um, it's a huge project for us and one that we've been working on for the last probably three plus years. Um, and it's getting closer um, you know, by, the, by the minute. Um, so, and that's just one thing that we're you know, working on. So just sort of kind of you know, shifting gear. Uh, we, we hired full-time one of the best sound guys in the business, um, Ozzy Greghill, and uh, he's been a contractor for, you know, forever, but um, he's basically worked on all the big, you know, big titles. And uh, so we're completely redoing our sound engine. So the sounds are, are going to be a lot better. And again, this is for immersion. I see some of the guys going, who the hell cares about sound? Work on some physics. It's, it's a completely different thing. And that's another thing you know, people always say, too. The guys working on sound have nothing to do with the physics. 
<laughs> okay? So we don't, we don't drop projects because we're doing this. Like, you know, why are you guys working on this when this isn't right? It's different people working on different things. So, um, but yeah, so our, our sound engine uh, is, is going to be better. Huge project is damage. So we have, I mean, that's been, that's been a project that's been at least three years in the making at this point. Um, but the gains are awesome, and I've seen some of the stuff. Uh, so the, the, the damage, to try and simplify this, um, when you look at the, the, the physics of the sim, the damage, it's a bunch of circles, okay? And the, the circles are basically surrounding the car, surrounding the, the, the tracks, surrounding the, the walls. And so like when you get phantom contacts, you're like, I, I never touched that guy, right? It's because two of the circles touched, okay? So even though graphically you never touched, the, the, the spheres touched. So uh, we're completely re-engineering re the damage model and now instead of circles, it's going to be triangles. <laughs> like, oh, great, super. But, but you can get much tighter tolerances with, the, with, with triangles. Um, and the first step is actually going to be in this next build, which is part of the damage model, but it's, it's, it's not going to be that exciting. It's the surface, the surface uh, model of that damage model. And so we're, right now where you know, sparks come off the car or something, you'll see them kind of just you know, disappear or, or whatever. So they're actually going to be solid surfaces, so they're going to bounce off, okay? Now you're like, who cares? Uh, but that's fundamental to everything else. So as the builds kind of go on, you're going to see better and better damage model, which at the end of the, end of the day is going to help racing because you'll be able to do more of that door-to-door -door without you know, causing, causing these weird kind of damage anomalies. Um, so that's, that's pretty big. Um, I'm relatively new to iRacing, but I've been, you know, doing simulations and games for quite a, quite a while. Where'd and, you come over from? Uh, project Cars. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's a, a feature that I would like to suggest I've never seen. Um, and it might go against the grain of what iRacing is, but... Um, Whenever you're practicing, there's always that one turn, you know. And if it's a two-minute track, you got to wait to get back around to try that turn again or try a different approach. So it'd be interesting to get your approach right, hit a key, and get your exit right, hit another key, and just loop that. So we've, we've actually kind of started that project. So if anyone has uh, had the opportunity of doing, like, stuff on the Nordschleife, you can actually reset back to, a, to certain points right. just before so it's kind of already in sim um we haven't really talked a whole lot about doing it for other tracks i mean for that track it was just necessary because if, if you're eight miles into the track the last thing you want to do is 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 drive another eight miles to get back to that point that you're trying to perfect so uh yeah good feature um and one that i'll make note of i feel and like bring, you could you could bring get it back your, to the guys your line down really really quickly yeah yep yeah thank you is there um, uh, any kind of plans for the digital dash coming coming to the oval acor? Yeah, absolutely. It's just a matter of implementing. I mean, so a, a lot of teams aren't happy with that dash. Um, so there's talks of changing that dash. <laughs> so the last thing we want to do is like add it and then change it and add it and change it. Just it it wastes um, art resources. Um, so yeah, I mean, our, our goal is to always have the the updated cars. And we've, we've been you know, pretty good at updating, especially on the A's, um, you know, those cars. But yeah, I mean, ultimately that, along with, you know, it, it was mentioned, you know, prior. I mean, you know, guys always want, you know, track bar adjustment and stuff. It's all, it's all stuff that we want to do. Um, the dash is easier than the uh, track bar because, you know, track bars is, you know, that's a whole new physics thing. But, uh, but yes, they're... they're there is plans, just a matter of when. I think we're going to wait it out a little bit until the drivers are more comfortable with the actual, because um, McLaren's making those units, and, and, and we've, we have a pretty good relationship with them. Uh, and uh, there's talks about changes and stuff. So we just want to make sure that we're not changing that every six months. So as far as content, everyone knows about MLA coming out, right? 
So the Mongol should be out in this next, yeah, next build, which is exciting. Um, and it's going back uh, to, to Dirt for one second. Um, you guys probably heard it as, as well. Uh, so Dirt opens up all different types of, of racing for us. So not only the oval stuff, but the point to point, the rally, the, you know. And we've already um, scanned the uh, global rally cross, cross car, uh, a car from the uh, Chip Ganassi stable. So um, that's, that's going to be some pretty cool stuff too. For the IMSA series, has there been thought of, uh, since you're marketing, is there addition of more up-to-date cars from that series? Are they working on licensing? Of we're, we're always working on licensing. Right. That's, that's a never-ending thing for us. Um, and we, with IMSA, it's been a little bit easier, I just want to say, because they're tied to NASCAR now, and we have, have a really good relationship with NASCAR. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the long and short is yes. Um, and there's actually stuff that we're working on right now that I think you'd be, if you're an IMSA fan, that you'll be, you know, very happy with that I'm not sharing with you right now. Soon. Hashtag soon. So what's after dirt? Y'all going to do motorcycles, drag racing? What's the big next thing? Let's get through dirt. Uh, you know, uh, and again, while we're doing dirt, we're still improving asphalt, you know, and concrete. And Dave's still working on tire model. Um, he actually ha had some pretty cool gains the other day that he's super excited about. Um, and all the, you know, uh, you know, world championship guys are like, oh, great. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's cool stuff. Um, and so uh, with Dave, you don't know when that's actually going to be implemented. Uh, but, yeah, so... We just started dirt, you know? But yeah, I mean, that's, that's gonna, there's, there's all kinds of, of things that that'll actually open up to. So another feature that we're working on is, is time attack, which kind of, I mean, that's, guys have been asking for that for like forever, you know? Um, that's the old, you know, GPO rank type stuff, you know what I mean? It's, it's and uh, um, so w with, with doing the Norch Life project, that actually gave race control some of the point-to-point -point development that we needed. And so now with DIRT, that gives us a new different, again, not necessarily related because you can do time attack on asphalt. But uh, you know, time attack is actually right around the corner. Um, and you know, that, that's going to be pretty, pretty exciting as well. Guys have been asking for that like for forever. So that's a... That's a pretty cool feature, and that's right around the corner. Yeah. My, qu my question first. Uh, since I didn't get it through enough of them yesterday on the live show. Um, weather, question, comment. Um, so I, I think it would be really interesting. I know you talked about it a little bit in, in the Oval session earlier about uh, having an ability to bring real-world weather into the sim. Well, is that partnering with someone like a weather.com or something and have that live information in there and maybe having an ability where you go into your week that you're planning on racing on a Monday and you can see the five-day forecast because you're getting the same five-day forecast they have and like real world the weather is gonna you know that forecast is gonna change that's not always gonna be accurate but it gives you an idea are you in collusion with Mr. Dagger? yeah okay <laughs> so <laughs> So I was wondering, is, is, that, is that something, a partnership along those lines, is that something that maybe you're looking at, thinking, could be done eventually type thing? I mean, I hate to say this, but anything can be done. It's just time and money. Sure. Time, money, resources. Um, and we just recently kind of implemented the, the variable weather functionality. So it's baby steps. Um, do we want it eventually? I mean, sure. And would it make sense to partner up with a weather.com or something? Absolutely. Um, and have we talked on a fairly high level about implementation? Sure. Uh, you know, but uh, for me to say it's going to be here next build would be reckless. Sure. And I don't want to be reckless. Although sometimes I like that, but not, not in this case. Okay. Yeah. Weather, but that and, and that and that leads to 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 um, day to night, and that leads to you know twenty four hour racing, and that leads to you know. And the cool thing is, is that 
as we get further along in our DX11 implementation is it's going to allow us to do a lot of things graphically that we haven't been able to do in the past. Um, it's going to allow us to do things more efficiently. Um, and so, you know, the guys on the console side have it easy. They design a one platform and, you know, they can max everything out where we have to, you know, deal with a bunch of, of things that if we, if, we added right, if we added the things right now that we want to add, I think it would eliminate half the people's, you know, hardware. And that's bad for business. So we have to be kind of scalable um, on that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, I think once we get DX11 fully implemented, it's going to help. Like, we've been working on another project, animation. Um, you know, virtual uh, uh, pit crews. Uh, and in more in environment type things, um, you know, going on. Uh, and I've seen that stuff already, and it's pretty it's pretty cool. And again, is it going to affect your actual on, you know, your, your racing? No, but it's just going to make the sim that much more immersive. And I think at the end of the day, we'd all like that. Um, so we're, we're definitely working towards that. Why can't I spectate the Euro Mazda series? The Euro Mazda is a geoblock series. <laughs> I want to just so, watch it. <laughs> but believe me, and, and the racing is awesome. So like if, if you've, if you've ever like just tuned into like the, the you know race bot broadcast or, or um, it, it's it's really good racing. Um, when we first started that, I actually I I, I put that together through a, a marketing agency from from Mazda Europe, and I like you know I'm like, why don't you leave it open, have everyone race in it? Only the people from that region would qualify. We did that with the Intel thing, the Intel you know GP and GT series. You know, um, and it creates much more buzz. You get better car counts. You get better competition. You get more people are into it. You're promoting Mazdas, and ultimately, that's what that's what you want to do, right? Uh, and they they said this is how we want to do it. And and if you can't do it this way, we understand. But then we're not doing it. And so uh, I'm not going to fight Mazda Europe on on how they want to run their competition. You know, but yeah, it's it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> But again, that, that wasn't our end. We wanted to have that open because, again, it, it would make it better for everyone. And again, then you do you know, um, participation prizes too, like you know, cool Mazda gear. I mean, you, know, you could have made it way bigger than it is right now. But if anyone is, hasn't seen that series, um, it, it's, you, can, you can see it on iRacing Live and on, on RaceBot. And it's, it's some good racing. It's short too, so it's, it's over in like, you know, less than a half hour normally, and uh, it's really good racing. About marketing and stuff, um, how do you go Marketing about, or stuff. Well, how do you go about getting, and how do you approach uh, getting some of these companies to come on board? And with that, what I'm talking about is your uh, quarterly uh, sponsorships of, of a, uh, you know, like uh, you've seen Peak and some of the yeah. different ones. How do you guys go about getting some of that, and um, how aggressive are you with that? What, so, what's the cost? To you? Well, I mean, I'll happily talk cost with you after, you know, after. But I mean, it's 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 fairly inexpensive when you consider the the targeted audience that you're reaching, uh, and the you know the, these these companies, the Coca Colas of the world. They want millions and millions and millions of impressions. That's just, that's what they do, you know? So they automatically, that's their first question. You know, how, many eyeball, how many unique eyeballs am I going to reach within X period, right? Um, and you can talk CPMs with them all day long. And, and at, the, at the end of the day, you know, yeah. And, and if, if, they're, if they're reaching 100,000 people, you know, that's to them is is nothing. What's great is we have people that kind of get it, want to be in that space, realize it's kind of the future and where things are going, especially with, uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, VR stuff. So we have big companies like Peak and Intel and, and, and guys that I'm in, in talks with now that kind of get it. And it's been starting, it, it's been getting easier, but a lot of these guys have never heard of iRacing. And so it's, it's me you know, cold calling, sending out proposals. Have we been super aggressive? No, because there's just a ton of other stuff that, that we're working on. It's a pretty small department. Um, but yeah, I mean, we need that revenue stream at the end of the day because it'll help your experience at the end of the day 
if we can do more things. Um, and, and believe me, I mean, you know, Tony and, and John and all those guys, they, 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 they want revenue. I mean, it's, it is a business. So um, what's really cool is since we announced Dirt, uh, we have uh, a lot of guys from that world have been approaching us saying, hey, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do this, we want to do that. So uh, as, as more people hear about us and as more people can see the you know, peak series and so on and so forth, it'll only grow the impressions, which will then attract advertisers. Because right now it's pretty niche. And so unless you're kind of trying to reach a certain goal um, to reach a, a, a very segmented audience, you know, it's probably not for you, you know? Um, but it's, it's growing and it's making my job a little bit easier each and every day. But good question, thanks. So I think we're out of time. Uh, I wanna thank you all, obviously, again, for being members, for being here, for caring enough to spend a few days with, with Sion and myself. And, and uh, I know it's fun for everyone to you know, meet each other. Uh, you know, everyone kind of um, yells at each other online, but it's a little bit different when you see people face to face. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for coming down and, and hopefully you'll continue to improve, uh, continue to enjoy the improvements that iRacing is making um, and you know, grow, grow the community. Um, you know, invite people in because you guys are our best advocates and our best sales tool. So uh, the more people in the sim, I think the better for everyone. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it.